Acute pancreatitis is uh, a very painful condition that is most likely not going to show up in a clinic, but m more often in the emergency room. These people are in a lot of pain, and so they're probably going to bypass going to their primary care doctor and go straight to the hospital. The pain is usually in the upper middle uh, abdomen or, uh, or on the left side. It can radiate to the back. A lot of these people have nausea and vomiting. Some have fever, and almost all of them have uh, exacerbation of these symptoms when they try and eat something. So on the physical exam, they might have hypo or hypertension. So you can have hypotension because some of these are, are associated with, uh, with a lot of bleeding or uh, possibly movement of fluid into the uh, peritoneal space. Abdominal tenderness is common, but it's not going to be as much pain as the as the pain they're having from the pancreatitis. Reduced bowel sounds will show up because of a, a reflex small uh, small bowel ileus, and uh, they may have some jaundice. Gray Turner's or Cullen sign are both are both results of internal bleeding and uh, an epigastric mass may be palpable if they have a pseudocyst associated with their pancreatitis. So if you have these these symptoms or some of these symptoms then uh, then there's other things that you need to rule out. You know, pancreatic cancer can can have some of the these same types of pain. Cholecystitis will have pain usually in the upper right hand quadrant but it's not always that easy to localize. Gastritis might look really similar to this as well as in uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Spontaneous bacterial, bacterial peritonitis will have that same type of peritoneal pain. I didn't mention but the the pain is is often going to be such that the patients don't want to move movement will often make it worse and uh, and that will be similar to the presentation of a spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Mesenteric ischemia generally will have lower uh, lower abdominal pain but it can present similarly to this and uh, dyspepsia which is often not quite as severe. So the major causes of pancreatitis are gallstones, alcohol, and idiopathic. Uh, the three of those together make up almost all cases of, of acute pancreatitis. Gallstones, of course, is because the stone gets stuck in the common duct and backs up uh, into the pancreas. Alcohol uh, damages the pancreas. It was used to, we used to think that smoking might be associated, but, but, uh, Smoking is more just associated with alcohol. It's uh, not associated with pancreatitis. And the idiopathic causes represent up to 30% of all acute pancreatitis. So a lot of these people won't go home with a real understanding of why it happened. Hypertriglyceridemia and hypercalcemia both can lead to pancreatitis. There are several types of genetic causes of, of acute pancreatitis. Lots of different drugs can can do it. The AIDS drugs, diuretics, valproic acid, and, and some chemotherapy drugs all can, can lead to acute pancreatitis. And there's lots of vascular causes. One of the big ones is splenic vein thrombosis, but there's also uh, you know, any of your vasculitides can can cause ischemia to the pancreas, as well as hemorrhage from trauma uh, or tumors. Uh, tumors can block the pancreatic duct. Infection, HIV is a big one, but but any type of uh, bacterial infection can also cause pancreatitis, and there is an autoimmune 
pancreatitis that is fairly rare, but it still is a significant cause. So if we are uh, suspicious of pancreatitis, amylase and lipase tests are the two big tests that we'll want to order. There are other pancreatic enzymes that may be helpful. Uh, you know, your acute phase reactant uh, or your acute phase proteins like uh, C-reactive protein and others may help to contribute to the diagnosis, but really the amylase and lipase are the big ones. Some things might show up on chest film. You may be doing a chest film to rule out other causes. Uh, I won't go into the the signs that you can see on chest film. The CT scan is really the the major diagnostic tool or imaging tool used for pancreatitis. Um, abdominal ultrasound can help to uh, rule out other causes, uh, for example, just plain cholecystitis. And uh, it, it can also be used to identify pancreatitis, but that's dependent on how good the ultrasound tech might be. MRI is is gaining ground in use for acute pancreatitis, and MRCP is is one. Uh, well, and ERCP are both both used when uh, gallstones are suspected as the cause. So, how do you help these people? The major thing is to help them uh, not to die from. Uh, the effects of uh, of fluid imbalances. There can be a lot of fluid accumulation around the pancreas, and uh, and these people will need fluid replacement, or else they uh, can get hypovolemic, and uh, they can get acute tubular necrosis, as well as mesenteric ischemia. So that's an important thing to monitor their fluids. Some of them will need supplemental oxygen. Uh, pain is going to be what they're going to be most worried about. They'll be asking for something to help with the pain because it is very painful. As far as nutrition goes, we are moving towards uh, using more enteral nutrition as opposed to parenteral nutrition. Uh, it's it's been shown that uh, enteral nutrition helps to prevent uh, dislocation of of um, gastrointestinal bacteria, and uh, so the the more we can use enteral nutrition, we will. Of course, in some patients, that's not they're not going to tolerate it, but in those that do, you can use an NG tube or a J tube. And uh, uh, others uh, will just will require parental nutrition because they won't be able to tolerate enteral nutrition. Antibiotics, uh, prophylactic antibiotics, are most often used. It's a little bit controversial whether whether or not they make a difference, but. Uh, there is a there is an increased risk for infection uh, due to the uh, peritonitis and uh, and the fluid accumulation. So m most people will still use prophylactic antibiotics, especially in the face of uh, pancreatic necrosis. Aspiration is again used for pancreatic necrosis. The ultrasound guided uh, aspiration, as well as necrosectomy, to get rid of some of the necrotic fluid and culture for uh, resistance uh, to antibiotics. So, uh, because a lot of these are caused by gallstones, an ERCP will be used to uh, both identify the cause as well as to extract the gallstones. Cholecystectomy is commonly used in order to prevent uh, further injury due to gallstones. 
Anticoagulation may be necessary if you have a, a splenic vein thrombosis. Of course, that you're going to want to be careful with that because uh, a lot of these are associated with bleeding. And then um, some of the complications that the those who are caused by alcohol uh, will have involve withdrawal to alcohol. So you want to monitor that. You want to make sure you avoid uh, delirium tremens, which is potentially life-threatening. And then uh, upon release, you want to make sure that these uh, alcoholics get some counseling. Please uh, leave comments below the video so we can uh, make these videos better, or you can send them to kendrick at themedschool.com. And remember that these videos are used for uh, educational purposes and not to direct treatment. And uh, thank you.